obsessive about building muscle will always put, uh, will always focus on resensitization of insulin and also making you sure that with your supplements, you take a little bit of insulin spiking food. Remember, insulin is the garage door opener. So we want to have some of that garage door opener present when we're supplementing. A little sugar when you're supplementing, especially after a workout. And by sugar, I'm talking about a fruit, a piece of fruit, half a piece of fruit, half an apple. You know, I rip on fruit sometimes here in this program, but half an apple, a quarter, you don't have to eat the whole apple. You don't have to eat the whole banana. You can, you can put a banana, you can, you can cut a banana in threes and have a third of a banana with your whey protein, with your slender FX. Bodybuilders will always mix a little fruit juice in their smoothies or take a little bit of fruit uh, with their supplements. By spiking the insulin, you get more garage door opener and more nourishment gets into cells. Spiking insulin is actually a technique for upregulating cell nutrition. But you gotta be sensitive to the insulin. So it's a little bit of insulin spiking, just a touch of insulin spiking. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't include bread and pasta and all the foods we usually eat. I'm talking about half an apple or a quarter of an apple even, especially after a workout. When muscles are stressed after training, after working out, after lifting weights, after running, they're like in a starvation state. Muscle cells are in essentially a starvation state after heavy training or after any training. And the amino acids from whey protein, the building amino acids, they call them branched chain amino acids, B vitamins, EFAs, essential fatty acids. They're sucked up by muscle cells like a dry sponge sucks up water. And this, of course, requires that cells uh, are sensitive to insulin, that the, you haven't lost your insulin sensitivity. Over time, as we overload our cells with insulin, your insulin spiking foods aren't going to listen to insulin. They're not going to open up when the garage door opener you sends its signal. That's very frustrating. You know, I got a garage door opener that doesn't work very well, and it's extremely frustrating. Got to keep pressing it and pressing it and pressing it, and the garage door, you know, it just sits there. Finally, it opens up, but it takes a lot of work for my, my uh, garage door opener to open up my garage. It, apparently, my garage door opener and my garage are dealing with metabolic syndrome. Well, it's the same idea in a cell. That's why anything you could do to, to resensitize your cells to insulin is important. One of the all-time greatest ways to resensitize cells to insulin is caloric restriction and fasting. How many times in this program do we talk about restricting calories and fasting? This is the mechanism. The mechanism of caloric restriction, restricting calories, lowering your calories. Why? If you read the book Blue Zones, you'll see that calorie restriction is one of the all-time greatest, maybe the finest way from a physiologic standpoint to extend your life, to reduce your risks of degenerative disease, to reduce the symptoms of degenerative disease, to reduce inflammation, to reduce pain is restricting the amount of calories you eat and fasting because both of these strategies re sensitize cells to insulin. Resensitize the garage door to the garage door opener. Even Alzheimer's disease, by the way, dementias, which we talked about yesterday, and we'll talk about, we talk a little bit more about vitamin E, cognitive difficulties as, as we get older, they're not technically considered part of metabolic syndrome, but guess what? The new official name for Alzheimer's disease is type three diabetes. What does that tell you? Okay, Pharmacist Ben here. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls and more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can find all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com and PharmacistBen.com. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang tight, and we do have a line open for you if you'd like to get on board from, uh, do, 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 from the British Medical Journal. Moderate drinking linked to a reduced risk of death in early stage Alzheimer's disease. I thought that was kind of interesting. So, that might be a reason to give Grandpa a shot of bourbon every day. My, my grandfather did a shot of heavy-duty whiskey every morning. And then, uh, and he lived to be 95 years old, and he was a very, very happy man. So it's interesting. We hear a lot of bad things about alcohol, but periodically something good about alcohol comes out, and it turns out that in the case of Alzheimer's disease anyway, in the case of this uh, article in, on, in the uh, British Medical Journal, moderate drinking linked to a reduced risk of death in early-stage Alzheimer's disease. Okay, 
844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Tom in Westminster. Is that Westminster, Colorado, Tom? Oh, that's Maryland, sir. Oh, what's up, Tom? How you doing, buddy? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I did listen to Dr. Glidden. Nice. Like you asked if anyone had. Uh, really, yes. So you're right. How, what did you think? Well, well, hang on, hang on a sec, just quickly, Tom. Sure. What did you think? What was your t- well, What was your take? Had you heard it before? Had you heard Doctor Glidden or, or any? Uh, I've myself? heard him. I've heard him once before on the national show uh, where I did hear him for the first time. Not last night. Last night was the second time. Of course, they've got such a large caller base. Nobody can really get through. He feels calls from people and. Uh, I'm quite impressed with yeah. what appears to be a lot of knowledge that he he's has. He's a bright man, absolutely. Yeah, he's a he's a very, very bright guy, especially when it comes to the body. What's going on? How can we help you? Well, I was just going to add uh, anecdotally to, to what you had said. Um, the old folks uh, in the families uh, of ours, they, they do seem to have some kind of secret knowledge, don't they? My uh, grandfather used to take a tablespoon of Vic's body rub, which of course oh, really? is the letters, uh, you know, external use only. Yeah. And he would take that and he oh, also took a shot each morning and uh, sometimes more than one. And uh, he was quite healthy. And yeah. He always preached that we should eat the fat. Don't cut the fat off. Oh, nice. Your body nice. needs the fat. And nice. he was saying that long before the studies came out saying, you know what, that there is some benefit to that. So yeah, I don't know how they learned that. Was he a um, farmer? Was he a farmer? Was he a rural type guy? Like, he, d- d- no, they grew up poor. Um, he was a machinist. Okay. And uh, again, with that older generation, you know, they were learning something that seems to be missing today. Yeah. Um, they weren't so dependent on authorities, on outside authorities. They learned more. They, they appreciated their experience more. They learned more from their own personal experience and their family experience and what their parents told them more than trusting outside authorities. Absolutely. How unfortunate that we went astray from that. That's but, right. Um, I agree. I agree. That leaves me why I'm calling you. Um, okay. In fact, uh, when I was a kid, he used, you know, the doctor, when you went to see the doctor, you, you're grandfather or grandmother would take you to the pharmacist, uh, doc, whoever behind the counter. You, right. Unless you had dead, did you actually go to see somebody in a, uh, a doctor's office where you had to make an appointment? You guys right. would always... It was you know, easier to see the pharmacist. Doctor. It was well, easier. Not only, not only that, but he would always take more time and yeah. always would talk about... Uh, uh, nutrition and and get a better yeah. picture of what's really going on. So right. yeah, anyway, I, I trust what a good, smart uh, individual like yourself could advise me with. And right. that How is, can I help? Um, How, now uh, I'm on the spot. Now you put me on the spot here. I better help you out. So what, what's yeah, going with on? The chronic, the chronic illness. Um, okay. And it's been uh, about six years now, and uh, I'm having difficulty uh, with getting proper nutrition. And I wanted to speak with someone. I don't know if you do consultations where someone can you know, pay you. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll help you out, though. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, Tom, and then ask me your questions. Basically, it's it's really simple, and I don't know if you've listened to this program before, but we, we talk about it all the time. It's so simple, man. You want to get yourself on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. The Healthy Star Pack is the easiest way to do it. It's a no-brainer. Just go to uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and get the Healthy Star Pack. That'll give you your basics. Then you want to make sure that you're eating quality protein and quality fat and eating as little food calories as you absolutely positively have to. Make sure you're grinding your ca- uh, grinding your foods up as much as possible, making it easy on the digestive system, and then using fermented foods and probiotics. Now, there's lots of other strategies that you can add to that, but that's the core of it. Uh, that's the heart of it. That's the most important stuff you could do. Of course, deep breathing is going to be important, and spiritual, mental, and emotional strategies are important as well. Don't mean to marginalize those, uh, but the basics are not very difficult at all. Healthy start pack to get your mighty 90. Make sure you're getting a good source of protein and fat, caloric restriction, grind your foods up, use probiotics and fermented foods. Tom, send me an email and put your phone number in there, and I'll call you personally, buddy, okay? KFC, um, dot. No, no, Ben at K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar, dot com. Thank you, ma'am. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, take care, bro. Happy holidays. Okay, Colin, what's going on? Colin in Oklahoma City. Yes, uh, my wife, she is almost, I mean, she's full-term pregnancy. 
And she is she's full term. Did you say she's yeah. about to have a baby? Oh yeah, we uh, we probably not even have them on Christmas. <laughs> Congratulations, that'll be cool. That'll be really cool. Thank Christmas you. baby. Thank you. And she is having major issues with with this extreme swelling. I mean, I know they say it's common in pregnancy, but yeah, it's causing it where it's breaking off that what is the median nerve? Is that right? And it's causing yeah. Like At this point, how far along is she? Like ready to ready to burst, kind of thing? Yeah, her our due date is the twenty fourth. You know, that's the song. That's what that's one of the things that happens as, you know, you'll be it'll go down as you're, uh, you know, it, it will go down when she has the baby. Her hormones are all whacked out. Every, she's at the peak. Yeah. She's at the peak of everything right now. All right. Yeah, so she's, so she's like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I know. I must be awful. I can I can only imagine. So, but it, it'll it'll uh, stabilize itself. Most importantly, gestational diabetes is an unfortunate and very real phenomena, and I don't not I don't know that that's not what's happening. So be very careful with anything that messes up blood sugar and insulin. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's yeah. anything that throws off blood sugar and insulin. It's not necessary right now for her or her baby. Bread and pasta and potatoes are not necessary for her or her baby and can only do more harm than good. Also, she's going to supplement. Make sure she supplements with insulin, uh, with uh, nutrients that help her process her blood sugar and insulin, especially the B vitamins and liquid nutrition or liquid, I'm, I'm sorry, water-soluble nutrients. That's what she's going to have, uh, water-soluble nutrients, B vitamins, vitamin C, and electrolytes. Get her the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Get her, get, get her on the BTT. In fact, I'll tell you what, Colin. If you'll, do, if you'll send me your address to Ben uh, at KSCO.com, I'm going to send you a BTT on me uh, as a Christmas present. And congratulations for your oh, baby. Wow. Okay, okay, send me an email, Ben at KSCO.com. Put Colin and then your address. And uh, I'll try to get it out today or tomorrow, some BTT for you, okay? Ben, ben, K ben at KSCO.com. I'm in the Christmas spirit. I'm feeling Christmas giving today. All right, man. I got to go. Congratulations, though. Seriously, that's Thank awesome. You. Thank awesome. You. All right. We'll be right back. We got a couple a couple of you guys on hold, so hang tight. I promise I'll get to you. And then uh, we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Socrates in New Hampshire. What's up? How you doing? I like that doing name, Doing well, Socrates. Ben. You got I'm, a lot I'm to live with. Keep, Go ahead. Uh, my clear's with you today. What's that? My clear? Are you clear? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. Today. Okay, great. Oh, oh, I, oh, I see. To you Did you call about today? You called before, and you didn't get through. You were kind of fuzzy, I think, right? Is that correct? Well, yeah, I did. Is this okay. Uh, yeah, I corrected it, though. Why okay, don't you, um, I, I wanted to get to you about spirituality, because you seem to all, somehow always uh, go in and be, be, keep this mindset of helping others, and you seem to always be in this mindset of, like, uh, with, for lack of a better term, philanthropic, and I always have, uh, and I always, I have trouble going, uh, going from one day to the next, not getting really down on myself, and kind of maintaining a consistent, positive, kind of like outgoing mood. How do you do it? That's an awesome question, man. That is a totally awesome question. And yes, I, you know, I used to have a program before I did the bright side. I had a program where I talked about health and nutrition, but I talked a lot about spirituality because that really is. As you can tell, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I don't want to proselytize here, but it's an important part of being healthy. And one of my good friends who's in the radio business said, you know, you should, we're gonna get, we're gonna get, you should get yourself a radio show, a, a bigger one, but you can't talk about spirituality. You got to talk about health. So I don't talk about it as much as I'd like to, but I'm glad you asked that question because it's very, very important. You know, underneath what I've discovered, underneath all of our problems around self-sabotage, like you say, and by that I mean, Socrates, you're saying like you want to be a certain way, but you can't, right? You know it's, it's important to be a certain way, but you can't be that way, right? Does that make sense? And this, right. I call that self-sabotage. We do it all the time. We do it with food. We do it with our emotions. We do it with our feelings. We're almost compelled to sabotage ourselves. We know that it's not good for us to do certain things, to think certain thoughts, to be a certain way, but we just can't seem to help it. And what I discovered underneath, there's, a, there's an element of self-hate, self-loathing. And it's not the kind of self-loathing where, oh, you just beat yourself up all the time and hate yourself. It's the kind of thing that we're programmed to think we're not good enough. It comes from our parents and it comes from authorities. And this is one of the major ideas that I want to promote here on the bright side, is we are good enough. 
We're smart enough. We can figure this thing out. We don't need outside authorities. Does that make sense, so 